Uh, welcome to uh, our Open Doors Week um, at the University of Tartu. And today we are having an info session about master's programs in business analysis, economics, and uh, mathematics. And my name is Anna, and today I'm going to moderate the session. And uh, here with me, I have uh, Jan, uh, who is going to introduce quantitative economics. I have Hakan, who is going to talk about the innovation technology uh, management. Uh, then I have Melis, uh, who is going to introduce actuarial and financial engineering. And I have Kai, who is going to talk about wellness and spa service design and management. Uh, so the schedule of the webinar is as follows. At first, we are going to have a round of all the presentations and I'm going to send the schedule to our chat. So we will start with uh, quantitative economics and then uh, we will proceed with actuarial and financial engineering, and then with innovation and technology management and then wellness and spa design uh, management, uh, spa design and management. After all presentations are done, we are going to open a QA session. So I encourage you to leave your questions under a Q&A uh, box. Please don't leave it in the chat. It's, it will be easier for us to take, uh, to take your question over if they're under Q&A chat. I would also kindly ask you to please indicate the program you are referring to. So if you would like to ask question, for instance, from innovation and technology management, please, before your question, indicate the program. Uh, that you would like your question will be addressed to. Uh, so all in all, I think we are done uh, with the introduction. I'm going to send more detailed schedule in our chat. And uh, now I'm going to give a floor to Jan, who is going to talk about the quantitative economics. Uh, Jan, please, uh, the floor is yours and you can share your screen. Okay, uh, hello also from uh, my side. Uh, we are very glad to have all of you here and maybe some will listen to the recording later on. Uh, I'm the program manager of our master's program in uh, quantitative economics or some uh, language we also say it's the mathematical economics. Uh, any questions, just please, please uh, feel free to write me later. And lots of uh, information we also uh, put to the program website. Uh, I'm in the School of Economics and Business Administration. I put your uh, logos also our central bank and our largest commercial bank, Sped Bank, because uh, this program was also very much uh, opened uh, due to call from uh, employers that really we need uh, economists with strong uh, quantitative skills. Uh, before going on uh, specific, maybe a little bit more about Estonia as such, because it's really one of the smallest countries of the world, and may, many of you maybe have not uh, anything heard about it before. Uh, capital is, of course, Tallinn, it's in Northern Europe, uh, official language Estonian, very different from uh, most other European countries. But because we are so small, it's very easy to be here as a foreigner. Now, universally, very many people uh, speak English, older generation also Russian, Northern Estonian, Finnish, German. It's part of EU and NATO. So it also means that it's also very uh, easy to travel around Europe, for instance. Of course, part of this pandemic, but let's be optimistic. Things should be already much better in the fall term. And Estonia has been quite high position in many international rankings in terms of internet freedom, economic freedom, like in some, maybe I've heard it's kind of post-communist economy, but in some rankings it has been named as one of the most success, successful ones or the most successful post-communist economy. A bit more about one of the most digitally advanced countries in Europe. Like for instance, most public services are digital. For instance, we do voting, uh, local co government elections or parliament elections online. Uh, very active startup uh, activities. Uh, maybe you have heard about uh, Skype, if not anything else, but many other companies like Bolt, that is a main competitor of Uber in many countries, for instance in Africa, uh, TransferWise, so it's one uh, fintech company. Many of the fintech companies are very small ones, but some Estonian ones actually been able to uh, grow. 
So it's a really very high uh, dependence and, uh, on IT and computer science that we also use in our study programs. Uh, because Estonia has made quite fast development. Now, of course, it means that we are not so cheap as country anymore, but still it's quite affordable living cost if you compare it, for instance, to many uh, Western European countries. And if you get the residence permit for studying in Estonia, it means that you can also work here during your studies part-time or after graduation. For further details, of course, please look se separately. And uh, that's a very peaceful uh, environment with lots of personal freedom. That is uh, what my students have said. So that uh, I'm born here. But if you want to know more about, just ask uh, uh, some other people currently studying in Estonia. University of Tartu is fairly old, uh, from 1632, uh, established by King of Sweden. So sometimes we say it's the second oldest Swedish university. Uh, leading center of research and education in Estonia, but because we are so, so tiny, so small, naturally we compare it to its other leading uh, universities abroad. Uh, it's kind of average size university, about 13,000 students, but we are already very international. Uh, students from close to 90 countries of the world, or maybe now already close to 100. So if, even if you come uh, from our terms, uh, from relatively uh, far away or for us exotic places, there's probabilities that you may meet some, somebody from your home country. Like uh, I have a PhD student from, uh, former PhD student from Turkmenistan. He has made, uh, met some people from his country. So we have several people from Ethiopia, El Salvador, Costa Rica, just name it. Uh, we have quite many study programs, but very many degree programs in, in English. It means that even if you have some specific uh, interest, in my case, I work with economics, uh, economic students. Still, uh, there are many other things that we can study in addition. Uh, Tartu has also made quite a big, large progress university rankings. Many students say that actually they follow this kind of thing. Uh, and for instance, uh, not Times Higher Education ranking now in the top 300, but basically, if you look at the regional rankings like Eastern Europe and former Soviet bloc, and then basically Tartu is either in the first or second place in, the, in this region. Uh, in my program, uh, Master in Quality Economics, basically, the very broad idea is to prepare highly qualified analysts, but it could be also stepping stone, let's say, for managerial positions like. Uh, central bank governors that typically also have master or PhD in economics. So it could be public sector, government agency, banks. There are also lots of uh, fintech companies, startup companies, uh, international organizations, but no, they quite often actually also require PhD on top of it. Many people work in different consultancy firms, think tanks, uh, and PhD, very popular among our uh, graduates. So basically, what is uh, what's important uh, application of economic models and econometric methods. Uh, we do everything 100% uh, in English, but uh, you can also have a possibility to study Estonian and many other languages. Uh, it's, we are quite a new program, and so we try to, as uh, also other programs, always listen to students and see that what can be improved and to consider your feedback. And some of uh, our inter internal evaluation rankings were quite high place. Uh, we have very new brand, new uh, study environment. Basically, our new Delta Center, Delta building that was actually opened just the uh, previous uh, year. So if you look on the shape of the building, it's a little bit uh, reminds the Greek letter Delta. That is why one reason why it has such a name. So you can see it's uh, lots of greenery outside, uh, surrounding, but actually it's a town center. And also uh, some dormitories, dormitories are also very nearby. So it's actually most of the places are just within a walking distance. So it should be many uh, dimensions really very comfortable uh, to be here and study here. Uh, something about the dormitories, also most uh, dormitories are very recently renovated. Uh, they should also be, be quite affordable. Like uh, you can check for a home page, but maybe a little bit more than 100 euros. So I heard uh, places like, let's say, Paris or London, where you may need to pay, let's say, five times more and get worse conditions. So it's, it should be really quite uh, uh, good conditions and lots of uh, services that the students may value, like uh, bicycle parks, uh, different uh, abilities to do different sports, and so on. But for further information, you can check on the website. 
Uh, application that like in all our uh, master's program, deadline 15th of March. Uh, we know that there are lots of uh, difficulties due to pandemic. So we were told that uh, they are considering whether it's possible to extend the deadline. Don't take it for granted. But if you're really late uh, with your pa papers, uh, just follow uh, the website. Uh, we make use by 15th of May. In my program, quantitative economics, we have 30 study spaces, 18 with tuition P, uh, with no tuition P. It means you get, you get the scholarship that cost tuition P. But uh, if you also look at other programs, pay uh, attention to the conditions of specific programs. It differs program by program. So, I mean, some programs, uh, most of the students have to pay. And uh, application is very simple. In many other universities, much more complicated, but basically what we look into is your motivation letter and average case of a PA study. Uh, admission requirements, bachelor degree. It doesn't have to be in economics because actually some of our best students have come for, for instance from computer science or mathematics or some other field. Uh, but what we require is that you have done uh, previous studies in uh, quantitative subjects, nine ECTS or nine grade points in mathematics and six in the statistics. Uh, and always, if you are in doubt whether you qualify, so if it is if you write to me, send the copies of the transcripts and I will inform you. Easy thing to do. And also we uh, uh, have English language proficiency requirements. Please pay attention to it. So for instance, even if you study previously in English, uh, that might be sufficient, but need not to be. So please pay careful attention to these uh, requirements as well. Uh, I already said about the tuition fee. There are various scholarships. So some countries uh, can um, get possibly means the foreign affairs scholarship, like some uh former soviet union countries and many not all african countries have also ended but because this information is still to come already when you are here it's possibility to apply to different scholarships for even to start to uh foundation uh, there are some scholarships from tora uh, there are also some uh, scholarships for the best students based on the academic performance some awards for best master thesis some students work as teaching the research assistant uh, and as in many programs, the essential part is practical training in different institutions like central bank, commercial banks, uh, ministries, think tanks. Uh, and you can also do it uh, abroad in some other European countries and get the Erasmus scholarship for it. So different opportunities for scholarship. Uh, very short is a structure. Uh, we have uh, two basic models, so basically lots of compulsory uh, courses on top of studies. Then uh, you can have, have uh, three elective modules, either special topics in economics, financial and actuarial mathematics, but also basically Erasmus module, basically we study abroad semester. So you can uh, take a semester abroad in some other European countries and take uh, whatever economics courses, just is a proper master level economics courses. And finally, the studies end with a thesis. And also a list of courses. So let, let's not. Uh, count uh, each and every course here. But uh, generally what we can see is the course is, is economics, essential part are courses like microeconomics, macroeconomics, game theory. But we have especially strong emphasis anything related to uh, uh, quantitative empirical analysis, uh, programming, uh, all kinds of, of uh, software courses, econometrics courses, statistics courses. And that's important because uh, there is where are also jobs. And on top of these courses, you can also take, uh, take uh, different courses among uh, uh, in computer science, different data analytics courses. So it's natural what, also what many people do in thesis to combine traditional uh, econometrics with uh, machine learning uh, methods, like random forest neural networks, and so on. So basically, that's uh, currently very popular. Uh, and also uh, mentioned different specialization po uh, possibilities, uh, special topics economics, it means like international trade, for instance, uh, financial actor and mathematics, that is part of the next uh, study program that Melis Garrett will talk about. You can study abroad, so there's always some optional. So with some credits, you can take uh, whatever you like. For instance, language course are very popular. And finally, there is a master thesis. 
that also gives you uh, it's quite a large thesis. We really expect this kind of a solid piece of uh, economic research, uh, which might be important, let's say, if you would like to really apply to a good PhD program, let's say, in the United States, and many universities really would like to see that you have some proper research experience. Like some, some universities, uh, students only write like literature review, for instance, but they really want uh, really uh, kind of a uh, solid uh, finalized uh, piece of research, like uh, academic article. Uh, we usually, we, uh, as some other aspects, uh, we usually we say all applicants is going to full time study program. So it's not natural that some people. Uh, work uh, as I to study uh, part-time, but uh, also not full-time. Uh, we have relatively long uh, courses that are also divided into uh, shorter parts, so that basically after each shorter part there is a kind of a midterm exam. Uh, we provide all materials like textbooks, so basically we use this kind of a standard English language textbooks that are also used in other good universities around the world, like so well-known uh, names. Uh, lots of things that are done in computer labs uh, using different kinds of software packages. Uh, now, naturally, currently many things happen online, but the university has also uh, acquired campus licenses for different softwares, like MATLAB. Otherwise, it might be very expensive, but basically, university has campus license, and students can also install the software into their own computer. So that's also what is not available everywhere. Uh, and also, in, other, in addition to University of Tartu, there are also many visiting researchers, for instance, from our central bank, but also abroad. Always, every year, we have also some visitors abroad. Naturally, it's, it's been more complicated during pandemics, but uh, hopefully things will change very fast. About teaching stuff, I, I think relatively young people and easily reachable, but that you can say, uh, not about this program, but generally about Estonians, that uh, we have quite... Uh, uh, low power distance, uh, people are quite easily reachable, uh, kind of informal uh, communication. So I think it should be quite comfortable uh, here. Uh, our teaching staff uh, are also have done PhD most in different uh, European universities. We also try to uh, hire several new people to really to have like uh, to, uh, to have really instructors who are able to teach these courses. And you can see, uh, check for more uh, details about course and people in our program website. So I, I think the slides will be naturally later shared, so you can che check this uh, link for further details. And just uh, uh, people. I, I think uh, so far still majority are uh, Estonians, but it's higher and higher share of also foreigners over here. Uh, other aspects, uh, I may already mentioned about uh, internship possibilities that also students uh, value very highly. No, typically, uh, like in the summer uh, after the first year of studies. Uh, our program is relatively small, but as I said, Tartu is very international. And now we also have, uh, have students from at least 24 different nationalities. So we are becoming very international. And as I said, uh, you don't have to study here only economics, but other fields. And, and naturally, uh, now, due to this, uh, our location uh, in Delta building, mathematics, computer science, anything related to big data uh, is very popular among the students. But you can also take some uh, uh, study abroad semester in some other countries. No, most of our students have been in Germany, uh, but also in other countries like France, Italy, United States. And so I will just uh, talk about also career uh, opportunities. Uh, it could be quite many of these, like central banks, commercial banks, uh, think tanks, multinational companies, uh, academia, very many of our graduates do PhD in economics. And just examples of employers, you don't know maybe about the Estonian companies, but probably you heard something about Google. Uh, many students work uh, in uh, different startup companies, like Bolt is now, the, as I said, its main competitor of Uber in many countries. Uh, airlines like Finnair, think tanks, uh, universities, commercial banks. Uh, as we have said already, Estonia has very uh, lively startup com community, up to 1,000 startup companies and maybe 80 fintech companies. Uh, generally, people do different kinds of uh, analysis jobs. And so far, it has not been really a problem to find a job. Even during the crisis uh, time, I've heard that people re really can 
choose a job, that somebody took a new job and said, I really didn't like it, uh, then uh, took some another one. So it seems that there are ample job as to, uh, opportunities. It's very, uh, what, where people work in this country is very program specific, but actually our alumni most uh, do it in Estonia. And you can see for details in program uh, homepage. Uh, and also you can check on a home page uh, for some graduates that say particular uh, stories, where they come from, what they did uh, previously, where they work currently, because that's also maybe more interesting than I, I would uh, uh, continue uh, speaking here. And finally, we have also program Facebook page where we also sometimes try to post it. So I think I already took the, talked a little bit too long, so I will stop here. And in case of questions, write to the chat. Thank you very much, Man Jan, for such a nice overview about your study program. I think you can stop sharing the screen now. And uh, I see that there are some questions came and uh, please leave more of your questions in Q&A uh, box. We are gonna come back to them at the end uh, of the presentations. And right now I'm going to give a floor to Melis uh, who is going to introduce actuarial and financial engineering. Uh, please, Melis. Thank you, Anna. So hello from me as well. Now I try to share my screen. Hope, hope you can see it now. So I'm going to talk about the actor and the financial engineering master program. So I'm the program uh, director of it. And uh, I, first of all, I have to say thanks to Jan because uh, lots of, uh, I would say, all the facts about the Estonia and university hold true as well for uh, for my talk, so I'm not going to go over these uh, in, in that much detail. So first of all, what's the program for? So we have a two-year master program, so, and we are preparing specialists for uh, mainly financial sector, banking, and uh, well, insurance. And so where do our graduates work? So again, so in, in this sector, so I would say, um, uh, currently, in in the biggest bank in Estonia, the Swedish bank, the credit risk specialists, uh, so the credit risk modeling and the validation departments are fully from uh, or or almost fully uh, consist of uh, our graduates, but also actuaries uh, and also uh, also analysts in in different companies where you need uh, also statistical modeling with uh, some uh, financial and, and insur insurance touch, I'd say. So the idea is uh, that uh, the background of everything is, is uh, mathematics and uh, you are able to not, not just uh, apply the models, but, but you, you understand the models and uh, this makes you more competitive uh, in, in, in the market. Uh, so in both financial and, and actuarial market. Uh, now, the main source of information that besides this webinar is, is given here, so the short link is this uh, ut.e finmath. You can find admission information from there. You can, you can find all, all kinds of uh, facts about the uh, program from there. So just uh, if you have additional questions, uh, go, go there and, and uh, look what's given there. So again, so why should you join as mentioned, it, what, what it gives you, the, our graduates will be competitive in the national market, also international job market. So we have approx approximately half of our students have been from Estonia and uh, another half than from anywhere uh, in the world. And some of them stay in Estonia working in, in banks mostly, and uh, some of them go actually their home countries and also working in banks or insurance companies or anywhere uh, close to the uh, sector. Uh, so the teaching stuff we have, uh, we have a highly qualified professors who also do extensive research and have international experience. And also the location is at the Delta Center, again, what uh, Jan mentioned, and this is uh, one of the most modern uh, center of uh, digital technology. and. Uh, uh, in, in the whole Nordic uh, region, so just moved here the, uh, one year back. So 
some details about the program. Uh, well, the concerning the this year's intake. First of all, the tuition fee is uh, five thousand euros per year, so two and a half thousand per, per semester. And uh, well, it's said here that it covers tuition and some study materials. So well, it just doesn't cover the extra books, but you don't have to pay any, any materials anyway. So if you just want some additional reading, then uh, the limit of students is, is 15 this year and uh, eight best applicants uh, with uh, from, from European Union or uh, uh, EEA area or, or with Swiss citizenships uh, will, will get a tuition waiver. And you don't have to apply for the tuition waiver separately. So it depends on the ranking list, it will be given automatically. And uh, tuition waiver just means that you don't have to pay the tuition fee. Uh, the, also, uh, there's a restriction that if you if you receive uh, this study place, this uh, tuition waiver uh, study place, then uh, there's a limit of how few points you can receive. You have to take uh, at, at least, the, I would say, you have to take almost the nominal limit of credits. So if, if the nominal limit of credits is, is uh, 30 credits, then you can't be short for more than six credits total. After third semester, you need 24, after second, you need 54, and so on. This is not just for this problem, this is a general university uh, rule. And uh, yeah, so there's a, uh, if, if you are outside European Union or this European economic area, then you also need a residence permit and uh, you need to uh, pay half of the semester free before. And this again is a new rule from this year as far as, as I know. You can, uh, uh, you can uh, apply uh, through Dream Apply, and you get the, all the information through Dream Apply as well, in, including the admission decision. And uh, there is a possibility to, although you don't have the possibility to ask for tuition waiver if you're outside uh, those countries, EU uh, in, in economic area of Switzerland, but you still have a possibility to apply for DORA grants. And uh, again, you don't need to do anything extra for that. This is just few few best uh, in in the ranking list can uh, can obtain this crown. So, what are the learning outcomes or, or what you get from here besides uh, the explained or very or possible uh, uh, work will be? So, what what do you give? first of all the knowledge of uh, financial models, uh, insurance models but the, back, uh, the math background to it as well. So you, need, you know how to solve practical problems, but not just by using the software, but you also have the understanding uh, behind it. So if, if you need to, if you face uh, problems that are not textbook exercises in practice, and that's most exercises or most problems you face in, in, in practice, then you are able to solve them as well. So you, you know the background, so you know how to, you have to adjust your models or, or what kind of different tools to apply. So this means you know the probabilistic background, the statistical background, uh, and, uh, and you can apply those to the quantitative analysis. I think I don't have a special slide for the requirements, but this, uh, uh, because you, you get math uh, behind everything, then there's also assumption that you have uh, passed at least uh, uh, math for at least uh, 24 uh, ECTS credits uh, uh, before. It's math or probability theory or statistics that they are related. So we are sort of using uh, uh, mainly the statistics or probability theory part of math, but you need to know the calculus uh, as well. But uh, we are going to apply the uh, math to statistics, probability theory, and upon those, we apply the financial models or, or uh, insurance models. So you have the finance uh, part, uh, 
price engaging. We have the insurance part, so non life and non life, and there's also a possibility to get uh, international uh, international experience. I will explain if, if I go to the details of the program, and also uh, there are some uh, courses uh, that involve internship in, in companies where you can actually have some hands-on experience on how you apply the models and then what to do. So, okay, I think I can skip that part uh, faster because, again, the university information is the same as Jan gave you, and also we are situated in a Delta Center, and maybe just a new look at the Delta Center from uh, so it's a night view, and Jan's picture was in, in daylight. So, shortly about the structure of the curriculum as well. So, altogether, two years you have to obtain, uh, obtain 120 credits. So, we have uh, separated these uh, 120 credits into, I say, five modules uh, preparation, uh, which gives the background and, and so, sort of also uh, depending on, on your, your current status. Uh, maybe, maybe you can skip something there if you already have the background here and there. So then we have the core module, the specialty module, 33 credits. Then we have electives, lots of uh, different options here. Then we have a, a free choice, six credits, uh, totally uh, uh, fully optional. And ultimately, you have to finish uh, with your uh, uh, writing and defending your master thesis. Okay, so the first one gives you some, some math background. Master general course, stochastic models general course, uh, the modeling course, generalized linear models, and also time series to look at the different uh, uh, type of data handling. So this is the, uh, say, the base and the essence or the core of the program is, is given here. And again, I'm not going into details, but there's about half. So the, the insurance courses, the say life insurance, non-life insurance, uh, sorry, two parts of the life insurance, non-life non insurance, the risk theory, so martingales is somewhat related to both, and then you have computational finance, uh, uh, then you have uh, models in financial mathematics and simulation methods in financial mathematics, so this is the uh, financial uh, part, so about half and half, uh, depending, uh, so give, giving you some uh, knowledge in, in both main directions we have here, so the actuarial part and the financial part, and uh, the most choices you have, as I mentioned already before, is, is in, in module three, where you have the electives. So first of all, there's a master seminar. OK, so this is what you will take when, you, when you're also writing your thesis. There's a possibility to have two month uh, full time internship in, uh, in, uh, in a company. Uh, and there are some, some more courses which may, may prove useful, especially maybe this new course from uh, this year, this statistical machine learning. And there are also, okay, for, for non-Estonians, there is a Estonian course, but there are also three uh, groups of courses. You can take economics elect electives for up to 12 credits. You can take computer science electives. They're both situated in the same data building, so, so it's very, very close. And also you can have a mobility, so you need to have at least uh, say uh, um, six credits if you just want to take a practice abroad, or, or fifteen if you want to take the uh, Erasmus exchange semester abroad. So, and you can read more about this uh, on this link. Okay, economic electives, quite a long list. Uh, many of them were covered in in uh, Jan's talk already. So you can choose which topics interest you more in economics, and uh, take this from here. Uh, also, if you're interested in, uh, in computer science part, then uh, yeah, there's a list. Also, those lists are, 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 are not final in a way. You can always discuss with the program director. If you find something which is interesting, it's, it's, it very much relates with your interest and, and also is related to program, there are, there is, uh, substitutions are uh, possible as well. So, optional courses. Not much to talk about here, so anything, uh, anything fits uh, under this one, and ultimately the master thesis. And uh, yeah, important dates right now. So the application system is already open. So the deadline for applications is the same, uh, March 15. So you get uh, final admission re results uh, May 15, but probably actually before. So this is the uh, very, very final day. We try to, uh, we try to uh, work faster. See how it goes, and 
this is in August when the academic year starts. So if you have questions, if you have problems, if you want to, if you need additional information, just send me an email or again, look at uh, this uh, UT.E film map when you have all the program details. Thank you. Thank you very much, Melis, for your presentation and the overview of your program. I also remind you that we have a QA session, so please leave your questions. And since we have quite many questions, so some of them are going to be answered in written form. You can see that Jan already answered quite a lot of questions. So keep an eye on QA chat box. And now we are going to continue with uh, Hakan, who is going to introduce innovation and technology management. Please, Hakan. Hello, just sharing uh, my screen, hopefully. Is it fine, everything? Can, you, can somebody please confirm? Yes, everything okay. is good. So hello, everyone. Uh, so I am the program manager of the Innovation and Technology Management uh, Master's program. And it's a relatively new program that started 2017. And uh, well, Melis and Jan talked a lot about Estonia, uh, but there were two key words maybe you were able to catch, right? The, they kept repeating the words innovation and digital, right? That's kind of what makes up this program, innovation and technology. So what, I mean, as non-Estonian, Maybe Estonians see it like, you know, uh, maybe they are used to it, right? But as a non-Estonian, as, as a foreigner, it, when you come to this country, you would immediately notice how these words stand out, innovation and digital or technology. Uh, I put a lot of information here. I want to draw your attention to that as well. A lot, like large part of the population is using internet and the country itself, all the enterprises, uh, even people's own thinking is very innovative. And I can also say that the uh, um, digital platforms or uh, the efficiency of, you know, uh, using digital platforms or internet is amazing. This is one of the countries where you can vote online. And maybe you heard even the rumor that uh, that in Estonia, you can start your own company in about five minutes. And that is correct, by the way, it's uh, totally correct. So you can click on these links when you receive these slides and you can read more about the fun facts of, of Estonia. And this is, by the way, Estonian flag taken from nature. It's quite beautiful. That's why I wanted to share. Uh, one thing I want to draw attention to is also the amount of startups and very successful startup, startups as well, right? So these are basically key things that the ITM students would be interested in. And uh, one thing here, National Geographic is standing E in Estonia might stand for electronic. And I would say that it also stands for efficient. In Estonia, things are made simple and efficient so that you can do what you want to do. Okay, it, Estonia is really about finding great ideas, being innovative and implementing those. That makes this country uh, wonderful. Uh, Melis and Jan also covered a lot about the life in Tartu, so I skipped those slides, but I will also give my own pictures of the Delta Center. Uh, this Delta Center was an amazing project that brought together a lot of different institutions and therefore created an ama amazing uh, synergy, I would say, uh, where people from different faculties or institutions started to work together, and this increased a lot the uh, research and research productivity, let's call it that way. Uh, so it would be very interesting and very welcoming environment once you are here. So uh, our program, Innovation and Technology Management is covered under the School of Economics and Business Administration. So it is a program that belongs to this institute, but uh, this ITM is actually a joint program. So partly it is from the School of Economics and Business Administration, partly it's from the Institute of Computer Sciences. As I will mention later, some courses are given by the faculty members of ICS. And we have a lot of chairs in this, uh, in our institute, in our school, and we have several programs which are in English. 
And well, we have a lot of international students. You will see for yourself when you come here that uh, Tartu is really internationally friendly. So that there are many students, they are adapting very quickly. The city is quite small, everything's almost in walking distance anyway. And um, I tell you what I hear from my students, Tartu is basically one of the safest cities they have seen so far. So you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't think of worrying about anything here, uh, except something that Jan and Milis didn't mention, right? It's the cold they don't mention. So outside is pretty cold right now, but you will get used to it. Don't worry about that. So ITM is planning to take 30 students in 2021. And we will talk about the uh, tuition labor and all that in a bit. But one of the questions that we receive a lot is that, are there any dropouts? Like, are there any not successful students? Uh, we don't really have like not successful students. We wouldn't call it that way. But some students had some problems. So they took academic leave so that they extended their studies while others took the opportunity of taking, you know, going for student exchange and they have to extend their studies. These are not dropouts, but this just extends their studies a bit. At the end, it's um, no one complains, let me put it that way. And how are the graduates doing? As the QE graduates, as the, um, basically the students are working happily, quite happily in the uh, big firms and startups in Estonia. And I know only a few students who went back to other countries or their home countries. Some students actually started to their uh, academic career. So they, they took the path to PhD. Actually, one of them is my current PhD student right now. She was a ITM student. And so, and I should say that some ITM graduates are involved or uh, started their own startups. So ITM has really a wide range of, range of possibilities. And it is it, because it covers a wide range of topics as well. So um, I think the program is quite attractive. So what we have is that we will get 30 students this year. We expect to have 30 students out of which 15 uh, will have a right for tuition waivers. You don't need to apply for tuition waivers separately. You will be considered based on the final ranking. And the duration of the program is two years. You will uh, collect 120 credits. And it's a full-time regular studies and the tuition fee is 3,800 euros. That is if you don't get a tuition waiver. So um, there are other scholarships available. There will be DORA Plus and Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, scholarships. These will be late announced later on. We don't know currently how many uh, students will receive these ones. I think they will be announced in April or May. I'm not sure. And when, when you are here and you, you are studying based on your grades, you can also uh, apply for achievement stipend or the specialization stipend. And there are also possibilities for needs-based study and special allowances. And some students actually do work uh, to be able to, you know, to cover their institution fees. Some have families here. Although it is not recommended, although we want you to focus on your studies, uh, it is possible to work in while you are studying. I'm not talk. I mean, I'm not saying that you work in the, you know, complicated jobs. Some are working in more simple jobs just to save the day, right? While they are working, so uh, there are many options. Uh, so. Yes, financially, there is not so much trouble, I would call it. So the ITM program structure is like this. We have like uh, five modules. It starts with the core module, and then there is the digital business analysis module that's given by the Computer Science Institute. And then there is the innovation management module. And we let you freely choose some optional courses to direct yourselves in the areas of your interest and we have the master's thesis module. So the core module, we also call it basic module, which we will cover next. And I would like you to, again, remind that we cover the digital business analysis area, basically the digital area and the innovation management area. So we are trying to train our students in a way that they can uh, 
basically they are standing out when they graduate for the businesses. In fact, I should already say that our students are uh, quite demanded in Estonia. Uh, I, by experience, I can say that many of our students found the jobs that they wanted uh, before even graduating. Okay, so that's like the, like mostly it is like this. And the basic module or the core module uh, basically gives you the tools to, that you will use for in the other modules. Uh, it gives a general understanding of innovation, what is innovation, what, how, like how would you understand that some tools as like uh, statistical or econometrical analysis, uh, decision making and choice behavior gives you an idea about the customer behavior and data managing, uh, visualization and communication will be teaching you how to use RStudio to communicate, to analyze and communicate about data. And introduction to programming will give you like basics about Python programming. And there is the practical training where you will do internship in the company you will choose, or there are also some courses offered here uh, where you can do the practical training and uh, we recognize the, the work there. The digital business analysis is basically giving you the opportunities to analyze and improve companies' performance and to introduce ICT-related uh, stuff to different fields and applications. So uh, basically what we are giving you inf information about here is the uh, how to digitalize, right? How to use digital um, approaches for the businesses. And uh, I should point out, this is one of the standing out uh, points of the ITM program. If you uh, do quite good with these courses listed here, if you get a grade C or higher from these courses, and if you do some practical experience, if you get some practical experience through internship or through work, then you can apply for a certificate in digital business analysis. And that opens quite a lot of doors in the business life in Estonia. The second specialty module is the innovation management where we uh, cover the basically uh, information about innovation, how to implement innovative ideas in the, in the companies or in public sector, what kind of problems you may face and how to, you know, what are the strategies to grow your own firm, grow the firms. Uh, we cover all these things with these courses. And there is the master's thesis module where you are supposed to compile and defend independently written scientific research as in the other programs. And master thesis is 20 credits. And we have the master's seminar course, which provides the information and prepares you to, to start to work with your master's thesis. And we give the uh, six credits for optional courses our students uh, have different interests and they specialize in different fields. I know some ITM students specialized uh, towards data science, data analysis, while others specialized in marketing, for example, or innovation related field. So you can use this opportunity to take courses on, uh, on the topic that you want to specialize. We also definitely recommend Estonian for beginners. This is, uh, this you wouldn't uh, blame maybe, but, but this opens a lot of doors as well if you know some Estonian. It's much better looking than if you don't know Estonian. And also we have econometrical analysis course, but given that we accept uh, students from, you know, backgrounds which, is, which may not be related to economics, we understand that you may be lacking this background. So we do recommend that you take the introductory econometrics course uh, before the econometric analysis course. Those were just suggestions and there are many other courses. You can also take, for example, courses related to um, uh, machine learning, for example, if you're interested in that stuff. So the application is quite uh, straightforward. The online application is via Dream Apply or if you're an Estonian, for uh, through the system size, you need to write an essay. This is what I will talk about, this is important. And the official copy of the diploma and transcript, the proof of English language efficiency. Um, please check the website for proof of English, uh, English language proficiency. Um, 
you may have bachelor degree, you may have your native maybe is uh, English, but you know these rules apply and they can't do anything about that. Please check the website for that. And the copy of the passport page and confirmation of the application fee. So the deadline is March 15th. Please click here. You will have the slides. Please click here for more information if you haven't looked at this already. So the entry requirements. The, this is one of the points where I receive most questions. Uh, we would want our students to have economics or mathematical sciences or technology sciences background. This doesn't mean that we don't accept other backgrounds. Okay, uh, but we receive many applications and most students have these backgrounds. And I should say most successful applications have these backgrounds. And if you don't have such a background, but if you have taken courses of, or if you have some job experience related to ITM, right? Um, then you can you know, write to me to confirm, or you can simply apply uh, kind of like showing that you are related actually to ITM and you will be considered. Of course, for example, if, uh, if your background is remotely related to ITM, then uh, you would expect that the chances are lower, right? And we were already talking about English language efficiency. So the evaluation of your application will be 60% on the essay. We will talk about that and 40% of the previous study level GPA or average grade, okay? So if your GPA is lower, please note that 40% of the grade will come from there. It reduces your chances. So overall, the maximum score is 100 points. And based on that, we will rank the students and a, a, an admission, sorry, a, an application is considered to be considered for admission if the score is above 66, otherwise it's not considered. So what does the motivation letter consist of? This is important, basically. Uh, one, um, one point where people are confused about is 3,000, 3,500 characters is characters, not words, right? So every letter is a character. So please don't get scared by this number here. So you need to write a motivation letter, basically written part, which explains what kind of areas or topics in ITM, innovation and technology, uh, are attractive for you and what kind of um, master's thesis you expect to write. You should have a novel and relevant idea here, okay? And please try not to find it from somewhere else because what you can find from internet, we can find as well. So please be authentic, please, it should be your idea, okay? That's important. And the description of the innovation and technology career that you would like to follow. So as you can see, you can be expect to receive a signal here how much you are related to ITM. So that's kind of what we expect. And we also expect you to present a, a short video CV. So you should include a link to this video recording, okay, in your application. And what we expect here in this three minutes recording is basically a, a, the brightest points about you. So that it, it should be in the pitch format, it should give the highlights from your CV, uh, basically kind of answering the question, you know, this, blunt question, why should we take you, right, in a sense. So it should reflect your success. And you should mention here relevant qualifications and experiences, programming experience, if any, especially in Python, and statistics, econometrics background, if any. Again, this is not a requirement, so that if you don't have it, this is not a reason to eliminate, okay? But it's a plus if you have something. And which courses in ITM curriculum match your career goal? So what is what part of ITM is interesting for you? You should have an answer for that. And the motivation letter is considered to be positive if the combined grade from written part and short video CV is above 51 points, okay? And that grade is weighted with 60% to count towards the final score. So that's all from my part about uh, ITM and I will answer your questions in the QA parts. And if you have questions, anyway, just email me, don't hesitate, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hakan, for so nice overview of your program and the application process and the deadlines. Uh, I just remind our participants that you're gonna receive all of this presentation. So you're gonna have the contacts of all program directors 
so you will be able to ask your questions, but I still encourage you to ask them now. I can see that there are quite many questions were asked and uh, uh, Jan and Melis are doing a great job. They're answering it in written form, but you can still write your questions here. Please indicate the program you're referring to. And uh, now I'm going to give a floor to Kai, who is going to introduce wellness and uh, uh, spa service design and management program. Kai, please, you can share your screen. Yes. Hello from my part. Do you see uh, my presentation? Yes. Well, uh, thank you for all my colleagues who already um, told so many things and facts uh, about Estonia and, and about the country. Um, so I'm not going to repeat uh, anything. And uh, it's my pleasure to uh, present you wellness and spa service design and management program. And my name is Guy Domasberg and I'm the program manager. So this is um, in two years uh, international degree program we are providing. And the program has a sharp focus on wellness, service design and management. It is a full-time study uh, and we receive uh, 15 uh, students uh, every year. We also have uh, seven uh, tuition waivers and all the rest uh, must pay tuition fee, which is uh, 3,800 euros per year. The students pay it per semester. Uh, the program uh, provides in total 120 uh, ECTS. So who can apply? As my colleagues already previously mentioned, um, so we accept the applicants with bachelor degree or equivalent qualification and with English language proficiency. It's very important because the whole program is uh, provided in English. So um, actually uh, everybody who is interested in uh, wellness uh, industry or wellness business can apply. Is that so easy? Yes and no. Uh, we receive students who um, have already background uh, in tourism or who have worked in uh, spa or wellness sector but actually we also receive many students or many uh, applicants who want to make a complete switch and do something completely different from uh, previous work or studies so it's quite uh, quite a mix of students uh, who want or who start um, uh, studying our program so I want to uh, sh give you a short overview of the program. As the title already uh, uh, says, the main focus is on wellness and service design and management. And uh, the content of the program is divided into five uh, main study uh, modules. And first is about the fundamentals and to give the overview of sustainability and wellness concept and history and the wellness economy as such. And the second module is concentrating on spa, uh, spa services and spa service development and quality management. Uh, third module is about tourism, wellness and health tourism, but also marketing and human resource management in wellness and hospitality. Fourth module is about service design and visual communication design. And fifth module is about service strategic and financial management. I would like to say that uh, service design um, 
tools and methods are included to many different courses and it creates a backbone of the whole program. Additionally, there are electives uh, and research methodology that prepares the students for a master thesis. The third semester, the students have opportunities to go abroad and to study in different um, universities. So our students like to go to Finland or Italy, Hungary, Sweden, or even to USA. There are different funds available for exchange studies, internship and study visits in Europe and further countries. Internship builds a very important part of the whole program and it's minimum six to eight weeks, but it can uh, last up to four months. It is compulsory. And it's very important for all students to put new knowledge, what they have learned into practice and get a practical working experience in wellness and spa environment. We cooperate with international well-known spas and wellness centers. I can mention Six Senses Spa International or Charisma Spa Wellness International and many others. Of course, favorite countries uh, students like to go are warm countries because Estonia is, is quite cold, but we have also quite nice uh, internship uh, possibilities here as well, as well Finland, our neighbor country. But still the favorite countries are Portugal, Spain, Greece, Malta and Italy. Many courses in the program include company visits to various spas and wellness centers in Estonia to get a personal experience of authentic wellness environment. Because it also gives a better understanding what is actually happening in wellness um, environment and what are these wellness services for and how to create a holistic wellness service. So we provide international expertise with the teaching staff uh, from Estonia, of course, but also from Hungary, UK, Latvia, Finland, Austria. But, uh, but uh, I also would like to mention that we use local spa and wellness expertise uh, during the study visits and our students meet a spa manager, but other spa staff and wellness uh, staff members uh, for discussions and for surveys and research. So our studies are not in Tartu, we are different. The University of Tartu Pärnu College is uh, the first regional college of the university and we are, uh, we are located in Pärnu. It's on the coast of Pärnu Pei and as you may see on the map we have a very nice beach and, and a very nice natural environment for living and for studying. But Pärnu is actually a very old town settlement with a history of more than 11,000 years. It's maybe better known as a resort town uh, since the 19th century and now as a modern summer capital of Estonia. We have approximately uh, 43,000 inhabitants and in this small town we have 10 large spas and wellness centers. Why study wellness? Of course, first you have to have passion to serve people, to contribute to people's health and well-being. 
but wellness economy is really the fastest growing industry worldwide. And, and this wellness market includes spa economy, workplace wellness, wellness real estate business, personal care, uh, beauty and anti-aging, wellness tourism, fitness and body mind, mental wellness, complementary and alternative medicine, prevention and many more. And uh, according to Global Wellness Institute, wellness industry needs at least 54,000 new experienced, well-educated spa managers and directors by 2022. So I would say that you have many career opportunities when you study our program. You can start your career as a spa manager or an independent wellness expert, or you work as a wellness and spa service designer and developer for companies, or a consultant and marketer, or why not to open your own spa business? Now the question, why Parano? Wellness and Spa Service Design and Management is a unique study program in Europe. And we have been delivering this program uh, more than 10 years now. I would say that this program is a perfect combination of theoretical studies and practical work experiences. And it really opens the door to the, to the wellness industry where you have career opportunities worldwide. Our study groups are small, uh, 15 students we accept uh, every year, and you have immediate access to international experts and lecturers. And the study environment, it is peaceful, safe and green. This is a nice image of Pernu. Uh, we are located uh, between the Pernu River and the sea. And this blue green living environment is really inspiring. See you in Pernu. Welcome and thank you. Thank you very much, Kai, for so beautiful presentation, for showing the, the whole beauty of Tarno. Uh, thank you very much. I guess now we can open our question and answer session. We have answered quite many questions, but we still have time. So please uh, uh, write your questions in QA session, uh, Q&A &A box, and uh, we will take them over. So right now I'm going to uh, read out loud the questions that uh, have been not answered, but please keep an eye, maybe some questions are going to be answered in written form as well. Uh, so you can also follow the order of the questions. Uh, so the first question, what is the minimum score to get accepted for the program? Since the program is not indicated, so I will give a word to every pro program manager here to answer. So maybe Kai, we can start with you. What is the minimum score to get accepted to your program? Um, I think you are muted. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is like in every other program. It's uh, above uh, fifty-five must be the score to uh -huh. uh, to get to get ranked. And uh -huh. of course, as uh, as I told that there, there are fifteen study places, so that actually it's based on the ranking. All right. Jan, what about quantitative economics? Is it higher or how the ranking for a student to actually get the spot? If I remember correctly, in our case, it was also, uh, I think it was a bit higher, like 60 or 65. But all these uh, application conditions are there in the uh, web page. And not page naturally so that we consider information about all applicants, try to rank all of these and do this everything uh, 
at the same time, no matter when exactly you submitted your documents, just to uh, ensure the fair treatment of all applicants, that we have all uh, information available to, to the evaluation committee so that we could really make the best decision. Mm -hmm. uh, Melis, do you have anything to add uh, to this? Uh, I think the minimum is 66 credits. I, much, I, I thought so far it's universities general, but maybe it's, it's our faculty's uh, number then. The 66 is the, uh, it's the 100 point scale and it takes into account your motivation letter and, and your GPA, so which is, they're both uh, uh, set on to 100 point scale and, and averaged. And I think in, in our case, Oh, it's, it's, I think, 50% 50, 50 by motivation letter and 50% by, by GPA. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Melis. Uh, Hakan, is it the same at the Innovation and Technology program? Uh, pretty much. 66 points out of, the, out of 100 points is the final score for admission. Under 66 points will be directly eliminated. And also uh, from the motivation letter, as I was saying, 51 points out of 100 should be achieved. Uh, oh. this, this 100 points from the motivation letter will be weighted by 0.6, the 60%, right, to get the final score. And I should also say, if we notice plagiarism, that is already a negative side. So we will not consider applications with plagiarism. So if the, we notice such cases, we won't consider for admission. That's basically what I can say. Thank you very much for pointing it out. Um, so the next question, will professional experience counted on only GPA will be part to analyze students? Uh, does professional experience will be a part of percentage of scoring? So maybe let's start, Hakan, from you. How is it going with innovation and technology management? Well, uh, it, the job experience or professional experience uh, is not a direct part for scoring. So the scoring depends on motivation letter and GPA, but it has an ind indirect effect because uh, in the motivation letter, if you can nicely point out uh, like uh, directly that you, you have this and that job experience, which uh, relates you so much for the ITM program and will add to your success and all that, this will affect your points, hence it will be counted, but it doesn't have a specific weight in the final score. Mm -hmm. uh, Melis, what about you? Uh, the, the point that Hawken Hawk pointed out is the same for us, but uh, also it, it may affect, uh, again, not directly the points, but uh, the eligibility that uh, we can see that, okay, if, if you, for example, are missing a little bit on the um, computer science requirements, but yet you have work experience where, where you definitely have used some programs mm -hmm. to meet those, then we can say, okay, you, you should have those skills. So we can consider it as a fulfillment of the requirement. Okay, I think we basically covered this question, so I don't, don't, don't think there is a need to continue answering that. Uh, let's proceed to another question, and it is addressed to Jan. Uh, so as the selection process includes 40% the weightage of previous degree grades, my question is, would the admission uh, committee consider the overall previous degree grade or the grades in statistics and mathematics? In this case, it concerns uh, overall uh, average grade. But on top of that, we will also uh, consider separately also uh, your previous course in mathematics, statistics, econometrics. No, it could be also something else, like some people studied in the past computer science or physics, for instance. And we also look at these courses and these grades as, as well. And that also uh, relates to uh, the previous course, uh, uh, question about work experience, so that we don't have a previous uh, separate criteria about work experience, because that's important, but there are many other things that might be important. And that's also all of the things that you can indicate in your uh, motivation letter. Also, uh, regarding previous studies, to show more exactly what you have studied, like, for instance, which kind of quantitative methods uh, you studied in previous uh, mathematics and statistics courses that you can indicate in a motivation letter. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your answer. The next question is actually addressed to me. And uh, I think it will be better if I send you the link on how to pay exactly application fee. So I think it would be very useful for you not to, to like the, but basically in general, I can tell that you can pay it or via bank. So you can just transfer the money and provide the, uh, the confirmation that you paid the money. You need to upload it to Dream Apply or you can pay with your card. So I can send you the clear guidelines from our website and you can proceed with this payment. Uh, so the next question uh, will be um, will be addressed. Hello, how many students apply to this uh, uh, master's in previous years? It is not indicated which master program uh, the applicant mean, but we can actually make a round. So maybe Kai, you can start. How many students applied last year to your program? Uh, oh yeah. Well, there were uh, 45 uh, applicants. Uh -huh. And out of uh, that, we, we made a choice of uh, 15, but unfortunately, um, some of them uh, also cancelled uh, in the end because of this difficult uh, situation and this COVID uh, situation. Mm -hmm. But this 45 is, is an average number of applicants. Okay. Uh, Melis, what about your program? How many applicants did you have last year? Uh, last year, if I'm just looking at those numbers, I think it's about 50 something. So I think it's that. Uh, well, yeah, maybe those are the say, or say relevant applicants because there are some. Sometimes there are applicants uh, uh, who don't qualify, and uh, those are not not listed here. But I would say like 50 to 60 uh, applicants who are eligible. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jan. What about your program? Uh, as say, as Meli said, there are different numbers, and in total, I think we had a uh, bit more than 140. But perhaps uh, some had some issues of documents, so we evaluated uh, something like perhaps like 110 or 120 applicants who satisfied all uh, eligibility requirements. Mm -hmm. And Hakan, what about your program? Uh, we received um, 200 applications almost last year. And quite many. Quite many. And uh, and we accepted basically we ended up with uh, I, thirty about thirty students yes so yes thank you uh, so the next question is more admission related question so how does the uh, candidate's GPA factor into the equation I know that it's forty percent of the admission but I'm confused if there is a formula to normalize the GPAs into the one hundred percent of the evaluation score. Can you demonstrate for us how does an example of 3.0 GPA is converted to the evaluation score? So basically our admission office is uh, converting, will, will be converting your uh, GPA score and it's a very easy uh, scheme. So basically out of 100%. So for instance, if you have a, a 3.0 uh, GPA score, mean GPA score, then you can calculate it from, from the maximum, the percentage, how much you will get. So we answered that. Um, all right, next question is addressed to uh, innovation and technology management. Um, I'm a bachelor in mechanical engineering with good GPA. Am I eligible for ITM? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. So. Um, if you have the background that we are looking for, you're eligible. If you are not having the background that we are looking for, we don't just look at the degree that you have. So for me, it's like a bit hard to say something based on mechanical engineering. So uh, what part of this mechanical engineering education could be related to ITM is not clear to me. So if you have some specialization related to entrepreneurship still, if you have taken courses, if you have taken courses, I don't know, in statistics perhaps, uh, perhaps we could consider, especially if you have some uh, job experience related to ITM as well. So uh, it would be very nice if you could write me an email with some uh -huh. details. It's yes, otherwise you... hard for me to say. 
So you will receive uh, our presentations and you will have contacts of Hakan and you can contact uh, uh, separately. Uh, so the next question, what is the age limit? limit? Uh, we don't have any age limitation for any of our programs, so you're welcome to apply at, at any age point. Um, the next question is uh, outside of the question, so unfortunately I cannot connect it to another question. This question from Maya Eric, please uh, write it again and then we will answer. In the presentation of innovation and technology management, you are picking uh, 30, you are only picking 30 applicants. Uh, Hakan, is that true? Uh, no, it's a lie. <laughs> so what's <laughs> going on is this, that last year, for example, I don't have the number for the previous year. I only have the number for last year, uh, since I was program manager last year when there was the admissions. Anyway, so, we received about 200 applications, 196 to be exact. And out of that, we made offers. I think we made um, yeah, about 70, 75 offers, uh, which we call overbooking. And uh, only 30 students joined, okay? So we don't just make 30 uh, offers because some students just choose not to come. Some have problems, some can't take the visa. There are all kinds of issues. So we do offer more than 30, but we end up, we basically expect to end up, we have some smart calculations to end up with about 30 applicants. That's kind of the idea. Thank you very much for your answer. Uh, the next question is addressed to Melis. Um, respected uh, Sir Melis, thank you for this wonderful section. My question is related to the admission deadline 15th uh, March. Many countries delayed their exams due to COVID-19. In my case, my final year result delay and I will come after March. Is there any possibility of any extension of uh, leveraging admission deadline for those students who are facing these circumstances? Well, there are two parts of the question. Uh, I think organizatorically we can't make exception, but uh, I think uh, you can still apply because uh, there are always uh, uh, conditional acceptances, so you just get uh, resulted. If you will finish your bachelor uh, studies, then you get uh, you get the spot, and that's it. Yes, and also you don't have to, um, you don't need to have the final uh, final grades from your previous education by fifteenth of March, because usually you will get your diploma by uh, June or by July. So you can just take a transcript of records and you can apply with this transcript of records. And then if you are talking about your English exam, because there are also uh, some troubles right now to register to English exam. So uh, if you cannot take exam before the deadline, but you need to register for the exam and you need to upload before the deadline, the proofs that you registered for a certain date, and the results should reach us by 15th of April. I hope you will manage to answer your question, but you can also join our webinar on Friday with admission specialists, and you can ask more about these related issues. Uh, so the next uh, question is going to be addressed to innovation and technology management. Uh, I got a bachelor's uh, degree in art majoring in English and the master of science in logics management. Am I eligible to apply to AT ITM? Uh, my answer is similar to the previous one. Uh, it sounds nice that you have a master of science in logistics management, but I would like to know something more about the logistics management master studies that you had. So if you could write me an email, then I will reply that. Currently, I can't say directly something. Thank you very much. So the next question, can someone pay the registration payment on behalf of me? I actually a little bit have difficulties in answering this question. I think it's possible, but there should be your name indicated. But I think it would be better if you address this question to our admission office. I will leave you now the email of the admission so you can contact them and ask this question. Well, I can just say maybe that we've had those cases before and that it should be clearly understandable 
for whose admission this payment goes and uh, wh yes. who's the actual payer is not that important. Yes, the name should be indicated of the applicant. Yes. Uh, so the next question, uh, how is the COVID situation now? How the classes will be arranged in offline or online mode? Uh, maybe Kai, you can uh, comment on that. How is it going right now? Well, uh, right now, uh, it's on, everything is online. But of course, we are very uh, fortunate because our uh, group is small and uh, less than 20 people uh, are allowed to, to, to be and work in the same uh, room. Uh, so this is also why we still can organize some, uh, some visits and seminars um, with a contact. But uh, our visiting lecturers uh, can't come. So they provide all the uh, lectures uh, online and yeah, this is a sort of combined study mm. as much as we can. Thank you. Um, Melis, um, would you like to comment on that? How is it going at your program? Well, it's the same for the university, actually. The, all the, what, what's, been, uh, what's been said out is that the tuition in, in February and March will be online. In March, there are some exceptions allowed. So if, if you have some tests maybe, or some, well, de depending on the program, some, some practical activities that need to be carried out, but in very small groups, but in general, we're, we're fully online at the moment. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. I think we covered enough this question, so we will proceed to another one. So next uh, question is for innovation and technology management. Do I need to have a research plan for my motivation letter? How important is my research topic? Does uh, probably I need to have a research question too? I guess it's related to PhD. Uh, so it's for ITM program. It's for the master's program, the, master's. the motivation. Mm. So I would like to answer this question and the question of Amir Ali Ahsan, actually it's related. Uh, so the idea is that we ask what we ask in the website. So like what we are asking there is what we are asking. That, that's the same thing actually. So the idea is that we are asking an explanation on what kind of innovation and or technology topics you find attractive to write a master's thesis about. And we would like you to propose a topic which you see as novel and relevant Okay, these are like not empty words, these are keywords. It should be novel, which means it should be new. It should be something that you come up with, authentic. And it should be relevant. Relevant means the idea of the topic should be important or and it should be relevant to ITM. So you can't just choose any topic to discuss. It should be related to the ITM uh, program, something related to ITM, and in particular to the topic that you just said in the previous sentence, right? Innovation and technology topics, which are attractive for you. So you should be discussing a topic like that. Moreover, um, how important is research topic? It is important because if you choose just any topic that is not relevant for ITM, this is a loss of points. So it should be relevant. And how do you, does it, does it need to have a research question too? We are asking basically, how do you approach to this topic? How do you approach to this problem that you are posing, right? So like what kind of, you know, very briefly, what kind of methodology are you thinking of? What, what do you try to answer about that topic? These questions, if you can provide, then it makes it a more complete answer, right? So in that sense, um, we would like you to, like read carefully what we are asking and you would like you to, you know, focus on those points in the answer that you are giving in the motivation letter. I hope I was clear. If not, please re-ask if something was not clear. I think Hakan, you also covered like the next uh, question about motivation letters. So I hope so. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to skip it. Um, Yes, so then there is another question. Hi, unfortunately, uh, I joined late due to work. Uh, will you also share the recording after the session? Yes, we are going to share the recording and the presentations and you will receive everything uh, soon via email. So we are done. Uh, this question we also covered. Uh,
So the MA ITM question, I should answer that one within yes. this question. Uh, so we want you to have a good uh, essay on this topic, right? On the research topic that you will post. This doesn't mean that you have to work on that topic afterwards. So this is like, a, we want to see how uh, analytical you are, how you can approach the problem, how you can, what kind of methodology you can develop, all that. This doesn't mean that you have to follow that idea throughout your masters. All right. Uh, there is another question addressed to you. I see my second question maybe was already discussed before I joined regarding the innovation technology management program. How will be the studies arranged due to COVID situation? Is it possible, for example, continue living and working in Tallinn or uh, I need to relocate to Tartu? Thanks in advance. So the idea is that if uh, COVID situation continues and uh, we are told to cover the teaching online, uh, then uh, there will be even students who are not in Estonia. So we have to cover that. So all teaching will be whether hybrid or online, uh, most like probably online in such, you know, bad case, then basically you will have access to every teaching material, including the lectures, if they are live, if not the recorded videos and all that. And if the situation turns out to be good, which we really hope so, then the classes will be, you know, covered in class in the Delta building, which also means that you may have to attend. I said may have to, because this kind of depends on the lecturers, right? If they see attendance as like compulsory, then you would need to be in that class. There are some courses like that. So uh, this depends on the lecturer. But if the COVID situation continues, everything will be available online. You don't need to... Uh, relocate to Tartu. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your answer. Uh, then the next question. Uh, with regards to normalization of GPA, will it help if I include in my documents the grading system of my university? Uh, I think it is even actually required to include the grading system of your university when you are applying uh, with your documents. So please do so. And uh, I see that there is uh, one more question to quantitative economics, and I see that Jan uh, was typing an answer, but Jan, would you like to answer this live as well, maybe? Yes, I would also. It's a question was that uh, uh, there are no any points uh, between the previous research or publication, in this case in computer science. Uh, and I would say that even if there's no no particular uh, points or base, or it's not to separate the criteria, it's still very relevant. And we didn't put the separate criteria because there are not very many different things uh, that are relevant, like previous pre publications, previous work experience, uh, previous studies, internships, studies abroad. So all these are relevant. So definitely as to publications, please mention these in your application documents. And then uh, also you may upload the copies uh, uh, in the web page. And I can also about the computer science publications. I can say that even some of our master thesis have been later been using computer science methods and were later published in uh, uh, quite uh, high visibility computer science uh, journals. But definitely these publications are, are relevant. And please mention that this is your motivation letter. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Jan, for your answer. Uh, so we answered this question and then we received another question. Uh, does the University of Tartu still offer English language tests? If so, when and how? Uh, yeah, we do offer English language tests and uh, I will provide you the link so you can check out the dates, the possible dates and uh, uh, the, the process. So I'm going to send you right now. Um, so it seems that we covered the, all the questions, but you still have a chance to ask. So we are still here for some time until we receive some, some more questions. I just would like to also encourage you to participate in our um, next webinars within Open Doors Week. Uh, for instance, we have a, a webinar on Friday about how to apply to the University of Tartu uh, with admission uh, 
specialist. And also we have another webinar about practical life in Tartu uh, with our students. So you can ask your questions there as well. So please check our programs. I just sent it to the chat. And maybe you are going to be interested in one of our sessions. I can see that we received uh, another question to Innovation and Technology Management Program. Um, in case of successful candidates receiving non-tuition fee scholarship, can we defer to the next academic year? I mean, uh, I think it's like if you receive the scholarship, can you just postpone it to the next year? Yes. I think this is the answer to this question is no, because you are made an offer and you basically have to accept it or leave it. And therefore you can't carry the tuition labor scholarship offer to the next year. You can reapply next year and to be, you can be considered again, but basically that's the idea. Yes, thank you very much. All right. Um, so you have last chances to ask your questions, please do so. We are still here, but if you don't receive questions anymore, then we will finish our info session. Um, I will give uh, maybe a few minutes, oh, okay, again to innovation and technology management uh, uh, for Professor Hakan. Is there anywhere we can see previous theses of ITM graduates? Um... Actually, we have a repository of the, the thesis of ITM graduates, yes, but um, I don't have the link directly in my mind, so um, maybe, maybe they should visit, is it on the program page somewhere? I know that if you know the, the student's name, you can easily reach to the thesis of that student. It's like available, but I don't know the link. I have to search for it. Like if you can see that. Maybe, um, maybe on you could answer if you know. Do you have extra repository or do you use the university central DSpace repository? Because if um, I think we use the DSpace, yes. Yes. Uh, because the D space and University of Tartu should uh, be the right keywords, and yeah, maybe I'm going to be available. Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe you can check it out while we can take over this. The next question. Um, so the next question, please. I joined late, but we'll like probably would like to find out the scholarship packages available for international students, please. I think it would be the best if we provided the link to all scholarships that are offered at our university. So you can check them out and uh, see what kind of requirements there are. And also you are gonna receive the recording of this webinar and all the presentations. All right, I'm gonna send it. Uh, it seems that uh, we don't have questions anymore, but uh, you can still apply um, with your questions and uh, ask us your questions. Um, we are still waiting a few minutes as we have still some time until the end of the webinar. But of course, if you don't receive the questions that we are, then we are not gonna wait. Um, uh, okay, thank you, thank you. Um, Or maybe, uh, maybe you can, Hakan, you can maybe find this link later and then you can forward me and I will include it to the email uh, that I'm going to distribute after the, uh, the presentation. We cannot hear you. Uh, let's do like that, okay. Uh, I already found the DSpace website I was looking through, like to, if I can specify the ITM graduates. Uh, I couldn't see that option, but 
yes, the website is there and the thesis are there. So I can send you that email and you can share. Yes, yes, I can share it uh, in the email that I'm going to follow up to our applicants. Mm -hmm. I can see that many of our participants wrote us. Thank you. Uh, there is one more question. Um, is there need for course outline for our applications? Um, I honestly don't know uh, what, what do you mean by this question? Maybe you can specify. So you are applying for a certain program and uh, just basically. In principle, I guess the answer is no, because uh, not we are represented, but it's a, a program structure, we study program, but naturally in motivation letter, you may indicate further, let's say what you're interested in or what, for instance, what you would like to specialize or maybe what are your plans for your thesis, for instance, or uh, career aspirations, who, who you uh, would like to uh, uh, work after graduation. All these things are relevant. Yes, yes. Thank you very much, Jan, for, for covering this. All right, I can see that uh, no more questions. Oh, there is a question to Kai. Um, can you give uh, information about the accommodation in Pärnu College? Yes, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, in Pärnu, we don't have any uh, dormitory, but we are working closely together with the local hostels and, uh, and they are accommodating all our students. They are five minutes in walking distance from the college uh, building. And you uh, find uh, information on the website of the uh, Pärnu College. So I can also send it later if possible. Yes, you can also, yeah. is either right now you can send it to the chat. Uh, so if you can see, or you can just send it to me and then I will forward uh, uh, in the email this link. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, maybe better, okay. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Oh, we started receiving new uh, questions. Um, uh, so, uh, the question uh, is, I have BA in, uh, in HRM and MA in management. What are the chances uh, of getting admitted into mathematics? I would like you to specify the programs because we have here four programs represented. And uh, these are innovation and technology manage, quantitative economics, uh, actuarial and financial engineering and uh, wellness and uh, spa service design and management. So please indicate uh, which program you're referring to. And then next question. Um, I'm not sure if this was addressed earlier, but uh, uh, are there a required number of credits for a certain subject for innovation and technology management, like in the quantitative programs? Hakan, maybe you can take it over. Uh, let me read it again, sorry. Yeah, sure, but sure. Are there a required number of credits for certain subjects uh, for innovation and technology management? In, uh, we have the, so okay, I can think of it in two ways, but we have the certain curriculum where the compulsory courses are listed. So all those courses have to be taken to be able to graduate from ITM. Uh, so that is about the ITM curriculum. So um, all these 120 credits have to be collected. And if you are asking about application uh, as a prerequisite as such, we don't have, uh, we don't put prerequisites as such as the quantitative economics is the thing, but we, we uh, as I was mentioning before, we would, I mean, we don't take it as a requirement, but we would definitely notice if you mention any experience or any uh, previous, you know, courses taken about statistics, econometrics, R Studio, Python course, right? If uh, if you have such experience, as I was saying for the short video CV, if you should point these out, uh, you could find it in the explanation for the short video CV. Uh, that if you have such experience, you could point it out, but we don't ex we don't put such a restriction or such a prerequisite for the application. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you very much. Uh, so we covered this question and uh, it seems that uh, Abdullah is not sending us clarification. But again, this is a very personal question, I guess, because uh, we need to see um, we need to see your uh, previous degree. So maybe you can uh, also address this question to admissions. I will write the email. Yeah, maybe financial and actual engineering is, is the most most mathematics related, but uh, the answer is still that it depends on the transcript. So it's very difficult to say based on that. So we, we have to look at the transcript and the average based on that. The program name is, it will, can mean very different things across the world. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Therefore, it would be better if our applicants just send via emails their uh, transcripts or their previous certificates so we can check them out. I can also add from our side that no matter we consider qualitative subject, but there is also some uh, flexibility. For instance, if you have really a lot of uh, mathematics, but not so much about statistics, that need not to be a problem. So always it's uh, useful to have the full list of the courses that you have had uh, studied, and then uh, it's, uh, we can check in detail. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for your answers. There is still, uh, there is a question to Jan. Is it possible to work during quantitative economics course? How demanding the course is? Now, as I said, uh, it's not, nowadays that's a reality that the students uh, work as I to say studies. Sometimes university professors are not so um, enthusiastic about it, but that's a reality and that, uh, that be character, uh, that be recognized. I can't say exactly but, uh, what percentage of my students work, but uh, some already work in the first year of study, you know, some part-time job. Oh, and some uh, have more, uh, some, for instance, some people who studied previously um, some data analysis or programming uh, do some part-time data analysis job. And uh, some do some kind of uh, platform-based uh, uh, jobs. Uh, in the second year already, uh, but generally we are saying in the first year really the studies are very intensive. So that uh, may, maybe you could do a little bit of part-time, but not really, at, uh, not definitely not full-time. So that's not... Uh, uh, manageable. In the second year, it's already a little bit uh, more better. And then uh, there are some courses, some difficult courses, but still a little bit more time. So already in second year, it would be a little bit uh, more feasible to work as I to study. Uh, in the fourth semester, uh, spring semester, second year, uh, we have only uh, thesis to be written. So basically, even, then it would be even more manageable. And you know, in the base case, let's say that uh, if you work for in some company, and to connect the thesis or the work of in the company, so that would be, of course, an e easiest case. But generally, even if you don't get the job uh, during your studies, generally it seems that people have been uh, fairly successful in finding job. So I, I think maybe some people needed a few more months, but also quite many uh, students have already found uh, jobs during their studies. So I think so, so far it has not been an issue to find a job. That's uh, my su summary. Thank you very much, Jan. Okay, I think uh, we did our best today. We answered quite a lot of questions. And I hope this uh, webinar was very useful for our applicants. And uh, I really hope that you're going to apply and then we are going to see you uh, next academic year at our university. If you have any questions, please contact any of us. You're going to receive the follow-up emails with email with our contacts, presentations, and the recording. So you're welcome to contact us separately. And uh, wish you all the best. And uh, I think uh, on this note, we are gonna end our info session. And uh, thank you very much.